Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. In this episode, I'll talk about this book, the Moto Serial. What does it do? Very simple. Plug it in. Start Osmo on. And voila, it allows you to remotely flash a Motorola phone. Let's set the context first. Maybe you already have heard of the OSMOCOM project. OSMOCOM stands for Open Source Mobile Communication. And this is actually an umbrella project for a lot of smaller projects which cover different aspects of mobile telecommunication. The particularity is that it's open source and the idea is to be able to come to build a complete GSM infrastructure just based on open source software. The number of projects is quite important, as you can see here. But one of them, OSMOCOM BB, is specially made for the mobile handsets. BB stands for baseband. The baseband is the small ship, the modem, which is responsible to talk to the base station. It handles the radio link and it does all the protocol on top of the radio link. So what they made is they implemented an open source baseband and it's possible to flash it on one of these old phones, the Motorola C123 or C121 or C111. It works on several phones. It's a very old phone and it's the one you've seen just before. And what I did is just flash this open source baseband on this phone. This is what I've shown also in the beginning. Now, this is not ready to be used every day and to replace your normal phone. First, it's a very old phone. It's not a smartphone at all. And then it's more intended for researchers to find out how this whole infrastructure work and to play with it. And this is what I do actually with these phones. To get started, you first need one of these old phones. Just go on eBay and look for a Motorola C123, C121 or C118. They all have the same board inside, the Compal E88, so it doesn't matter which one you take. Uh, you can find it for 20 euros on eBay, but be aware, uh, most of them are designed to work on European GSM frequency bands and not on US GSM frequency bands. But when you have one of, once you have one of these phones, you also need a serial cable to be able to flash the firmware on the phone. Um, the cheapest one is this one. You can also find it on eBay or anywhere else. Just look for, let's try to focus. Just look for a CA42. It used to be a Nokia um, adapter cable. And with this, so this includes a USB to UART converter, which is inside there. Uh, on the other side, you will cut the connector and replace it with a 2.5 milliliter stereo jack, like this one. So you can plug the USB to serial the computer, other way around, and then the 2.5 millimeter uh, jack in the earphone, actually. How to wire the, the connection, uh, you can find it on the Osmocom wiki. Um, once you have the hardware, you need the software. So first you need Os libosmocore. You just need to comp download, compile and install libosmocore. Then you need an ARM cross compiler. And this is probably the hardest task. There are some guidelines on uh, Os oh, the Osmocom BB wiki. But once this is done, just download Osmocom BB and compile it. Then we can start flashing the phone. So how it works is that you call Osmocom. Osmocom is the software which will flash the phone. You tell which device to use. So this is our USB to serial converter. We will flash this C123 board, which is the same. And then we will we say which firmware we want to flash. In this case, we will just use the Hello World example. You plug it in and how it works is remove the battery, put the battery in and press the power on button and then it starts to flash. And as we can see, the Hello World firmware has been flashed. So we have successfully flashed our own basement. 
sometimes the flashing just fails. Let me try to provoke it. Ah, ah, here. Here you can see FM tool error. Um, this means that the, the firmware flashed and in some cases you will see it very often. It's unclear what triggers it. It could be because of the OS you're using, it could be because of the adapter you're using, it could be because of the USB hardware or the USB stack, it could just be because of the weather or because the curse in the wrong language. Um, it, it really depends. But I often find this USB to serial converter quite unreliable. So the cheaper ones use the prolific PL2303 chip. They are very very cheap but they are not as good as other ones. The best ones are the FTDI USB to serial converter which use an FT232 uh, chip. But they are expensive. In between you have these ones. Um, these are quite inexpensive nowadays and they use the Scilab CP2102 or 2104 chip. They're, they're, very, they're very inexpensive and then instead you just connect the 2.5mm to it. So if we see it, just plug it again this way. Start Osmocon again, and then remove the battery, put the battery in, and press the button. And this is how you flash your own baseband on these old phones. But as you can see, it's quite tiresome. You need to be physically there. You need to, whenever there's a problem, you need to remove the battery, put the battery, and press on the button. And this implementation is not a complete finished product. So it may happen that the software hangs. So at some point you will need to remove the battery, put the battery and press on the button again. And my idea was to use these phones to monitor for a long time the GSM networks. So if I do it for a long time, I will be sure that they get stuck. And I don't want to every hour go there and check if it works and if they're still running and then if they're not running, remove the battery, put the battery, press on the button and hope it works with this uh, serial adapter cable. And this is why I came with this board. So I don't have to remove the battery, put the battery and press on the button again. Uh, it uses several tricks actually. So the first one is, let me get the connector. So this is the charger for the phone. And the first trick is that you just remove the battery, put the battery in, and then instead of pressing the button, it also works if you simply put the charger inside. You see the trick now? The idea is that you have to remove the contacts from the battery, the connection to the battery, and remove the connections from, uh, from the power. Put the connections again to some power source in the battery compartment and put some power again in the charger compartment. And this is possible to do with electronics. You just use some kind of transistor to remove the connection between the battery and the connector and you do the same for the charger. And then you just have to control these two transistors which remove the connections and this way you can reflash so power off and power on the phone again in this sequence so you can flash the phone itself. And that's almost all this board does. When I solder one of these boards I will explain the design behind it and the decision I had to make while designing this board. Um, the bottom of the material is quite short. Um, everything fits in here. So you have, you need eight components: uh, USB to UART converter, which you can get from eBay or Alibaba. That's where I get it: Alibaba and AliExpress. And one of and one board, obviously. And it's a single board design, so you don't need any external board. This is the single board you will have. Uh, I had it prototype it by IT Studio, but any cheap prototyping service will be enough. It's a very simple board. 
as you can see, you only have traces on one side, so it's a single layer board. On the other side, you just have the seal screen, which will tell you where to connect which component and where to place which components. But this is the most important one when you have where you will solder all the components and you have all the traces. And here we can see the battery connections. So, exactly. So this is the battery and it's pretty much the, the same. So it's the same dimensions. It also has the knob on this side and the two knobs on these sides. So you can slide it in this way and then you can up, slide it in this way because there are two holes in here. Slide it in this way and then have it click. Tack. You can hear the click. So now it's it's pretty stable and it can't be removed. And if you want to remove it, like the battery, you press here and you lift the board. So um, it's not very easy to remove, but the idea is to have it fit inside and to never remove it because it should always work. It should always work, and it's sought for long time measurements. So it's still possible to remove it. Uh, it's single-sided and it only uses through hole components. The idea is that everyone would be able to make this board. So I had my mine built at a prototyping PCB service, but you can build it at home um, because the board is quite, um, is quite small. The traces are only on one side, so you don't have the hassle of having two layers. You don't have to uh, plate the holes. You can do everything here and it's all through hole components so even if you are new to soldering it's pretty easy to solder it doesn't have any surface mount components and you have all the markings in the front to help you place the components so we'll start and when i do this i'll explain how the design first we will solder all the resistors here most of them uh, there's one resistor which is used let's make it resistors is 10k so if we look at the schematic here's the schematic one resistor is used as pull-up so this is a pull-up for the first uh, for the first transistor all the other uh, resistors are used for to limit the current we have two resistors in front of the end loss this is to prevent the ring back whenever we switched very fast it's just a security. It, generally, it's not really required, but it improves the quality. Particularly because this is a power transistor. And then we have two, two, two resistors here. This is to protect the input-output of the serial port. So this is the phone side where we will plug the UART 2.5mm jack in the phone. And this is the side which will go to the US USB to UART converter. And just to protect this input outputs from the phone or the other way around, we have current limiting resistor. But also because whenever I switch the power off, sometimes the phone will try to get all the power from TX and or RX. And will not sh completely shut down. So the next time I will want to flash it, it won't be completely shut down and it will not restart the bootloader. This is also why I put this current limiting resistor so I'm sure that it doesn't drain any power from these ones and will shut down the right way. So we have one 10K resistor which goes on top. Which is R2. How to find out where which component goes is pretty easy. So on the bill of material you have the reference designator column. Let's see it clear right here. This will identify the components using some kind of reference. So here we have R2, R2 as you can see this way. As you can see the resistor and it's 10K. There is some kind of description and I propose uh, one of the products where you could buy it. And on the sales screen, and on the board, you have sales screen. On the right side, you will see R2. So you know which component, which is described in the reference designator R2 here, goes where on the board. Here we have D1, 
this resistor. And then we have four 1K resistors. Yeah, four 1K resistors. Up, just bend the leads, put it inside. One. <clears throat> then we bend the leads on the other side on the outwards so they're stable <clears throat> and you can either solder it directly or you can cut the leads first I do cut the lead first so the next time uh, so it doesn't stress the solder joint whenever I cut it so if I would first solder it and then cut it when you cut the lead you have some force which could stress the solder joint that's why I cut it first. Also, I use a pair of flat um, flat pliers, so a flat cutter. So when you use a flat cutter, the stress goes mainly upwards and not on this side. Whenever you cut the leads, uh, catch them before they fly, because if you don't hold them, they will fly all over the place and they could go somewhere you don't want, like in your eyes. So catch the leads way before they fly. And also wear protective glasses, just to be sure whenever something happens. These glasses are quite easy to use. I have a second pair here. So you can use one of these glasses, just for your safety. So now we have all the leads there. I will use my soldier iron. I will use some solder wire and we can start. The leads are still a bit long. So now the at least the resistor are there. Let's cut the lead even further so they don't go in the battery. Good. Up. The next component are the connectors themselves. Just use you can buy rows of 90 degree bent headers. These are just 0 to 1 inches headers based. They are very standard. Uh, there are two times five pins to cut like. Yeah, perfect. Actually it's two times five. Let's get it here. So the idea to have to connect it on one side, you will have this component. On one side, you will have a connection to the USB to serial converter using the cable which is generally provided with the USB to serial converter. On the other side, you will have the connections, and this is what's written here: PC UART, because it will be the UART. Let's get it near. PC UART, so it's the UART, it's this way, PC UART, so it's the USB to UART converter coming from the PC. On the other side you have charge, so these are the two first pins, 
and then you have um, phone UART, just UART. And every time you will see underneath what the connections really are, where you have to connect the pins. Um, this is the description where to connect to. Uh, on the charger you just need plus minus and then on the serial, which is a 2.5mm serial jack, you need TX, RX and the ground. Um, the connections on the PC UART are the same then described here. Here you have 5 volts, TX, RX and uh, DTR. To connect, no, so let's solder these on. Um, I made a mistake but in, in this design, but you only see it in the end, that when you put the header on, you don't see the names which are under it anymore. Here, as we can see here, we can, we don't see the, the name anymore. So that's a bummer and I'll correct it. But you can always print the seal screen by yourself and here you still see the name, so you know where you have to connect the thing. The pins. So let's have the two of them. What I do is I always start with the flattest package, so, and then I, I solder them and I go to the next one, so whenever I I put the components inside. I can flip the board and have it stuck to the. Okay, not always. Normally it should work this way. Go in, so don't be. So this way I can put the components in and then I can solder them and I can flush them. Uh, I can press it on the table itself and it's high enough. So let's solder the pins. Normally I have some fume extractor uh, to remove the flux, but here because I don't want it to be too loud to the microphone, I don't, I just don't use it. And what I do is when I solder in the fume, I come make up, I'm just blowing on it, so I, I remove it and don't inhale it. I also have some lightning, but then the uh, contrast would be just bad on the thing. Um, now we have to do connections. That's that's done well. Next component is the flattest one, is this transistor. This is a power transistor. What it does, it, it cuts ground. Uh, it's an NMOS transistor and channel MOSFET transistor. Um, and what it does, it cuts, cuts ground uh, to the board. So it cuts two grounds, the run, the minus from the charger port and the ground from the UART. Because if you only cut the ground, separate the ground from the charger, what happens is that the 5 volts will go to the plus pole of the charger and go come back to the UART ground. That's why you have to cut to these two grounds. Else you could control PMOS, but PMOS are just a bit more expensive, a bit more bulky and a bit harder to control. So what I do is just up. Since everything will be flush, you just put it in and then up, you remove it. Ah. You can also use tape, and I probably will use it in the end if it continues this way. You can also use tape to put it on. Uh, I don't put anything to uh, behind this metallic tab to remove the heat because there's not a lot of heat when, when charging. Solder it. The leads are a bit short, but should be fine.
yeah, they should hold quite well. The next component is this diode here, which you see in the schematic. In the schematic, it's this diode. It does two things actually. So, this diode will provide power from the plus 5 volts to the battery port. The battery port, which is here. You can see it. The battery port, which is here. I use a diode because on the battery port, you generally expect 3.7 volts or 4.2 volts because it's a lithium ion battery. Um, here we use the 5 volts from the UART. USB to UART converter and using this diode we will and because of the voltage dropout of the diode we will have zero dot around 0 0.6 volts drop so it will be only 4.4 volts on the battery connections around there actually even if it's 5 volts it's not really important uh, the, the voltage regulator on the phone will still work but at least we are a bit closer to the battery voltage level than to the 5 volts, so it's better. The second reason is that whenever you connect the charger, it will try to charge the, the battery itself. So normally current should, fly, should go in the battery to charge the battery. And this is why this diode is very important. So we don't have any current from the charging circuit of the phone going back to the 5 volts that would create a mess. So this is the most important protection where the diode is there. Use any normal diode. Take the diode. Have my side cutter. Yeah. One, two. Here we have the plus and minus indication. On the diode, generally, this is where this is where it should be connected to plus, this side. And on the other side you have a white marking. This should be where the minus is connected. Hello, focus on here. So this should be the plus connected to the plus and this could be connected to minus. And you can see the marking here, which corresponds to this side. To this side, so this is the marking. But just to be sure, always look at the data sheet. Let's put the component in. Bend the leads. Move the leads. And solder them. That is in there. Let's put it back. Next, we have this transistor Q2. transistor in the schematic this is Q2 what it allows you is um, reverse it's, it's actually used as an inverter the DTR signal coming from the USB is high when no when the serial port is not open um, when the serial port is opened DTR data transmit ready will be low so because NMOS let current through when the signal is high, we want the inverse from DTR. We want that when the connection is open, when the serial port is open, DTR will be low, but we want this and the signal through this power and MOS to be high. So what we use is simply another transistor which will uh, which will inverse the which will invert the voltage level coming through Q1, which is the power transistor. And it simply does that by, um, by per default, there are 5 volts. Oh, how does it work? Yeah. Uh, it will simply not connect the 5 volts which are coming here to ground. So there will be 5 volts in there. Because this gate will be closed when this goes low. So if this is closed, this point, which is at 5 volts, 
is not connected to ground anymore, so this connection will be at 5 volts. Um, how to put it is also quite easy. You have a flat side on the board here. So this is where the flat side of the transistor is. Be aware that on um, transistors, generally, oh, the hole is blocked. It's a shame. Move this. I was sloppy, but it's not easy with a camera to solder. And then you can bend it down. Oh, now it's bent. So let's solder. So if you use another transistor than the one described in the bill of material, be sure that, that the, um, the source, the drain and the gate correspond to what the ones I expect. Because generally transistors don't always use the same numbering. Cut the leads shorter even. And then we have three capacitors. These are huge capacitors. I use 470 microfarad capacitor. And why do I use this huge capacitor? Because well, on a normal phone, you would use a battery. And the battery is quite important because this phone transmits the radio up to 2 watts. And the charger here cannot deliver uh, more than 2 watts, so the radio transmission can be transmitted to watts. That would be just too big. So this is actually, for the phone, very important. It's a giant, giant capacitor and power source where they can draw on a lot of power within bursts whenever the radio is transmitted. So we still need some kind of power because the power coming from the PC to UART, USB to UART converter won't be enough to sustain these tra power transmissions. I've measured it and actually at peak times, but in short bursts it can consume up to 2 amperes at 5 volts on these pins. And this is why I use 3 capacitors. Uh, and I found out that uh, 3 times 740 microfarad is enough to work for receiving and for transmitted. I didn't test all the scenario, I didn't pass any certification uh, yet, uh, I will do it a bit later on the next design, but it seems to be okay. Uh, I use um, electrolytic aluminum capacitors because they are very inexpensive with your, for huge values and also they are particularly inexpensive if you use the through-hole components. If you use the SMT version, they are a bit more expensive. And this was one reason also why I decided to go through-hole completely, because we needed the pins here, we needed um, cheap uh, aluminum electronic, uh, electrolytic capacitors, so why not have the whole board uh, through-hole so everyone can solder it very easily and then we just need one layer with all the connections. And the routing is simple enough, so you can have it through home. You can bend the lead first. Also look at the polarity. Here you have the minus, and then on the plus, generally this is a long lead. On the board itself, you also have the markings, plus and minus. You can put things in. One. All the way around. Two. And three. And as we can see, even if the seal screen is uh, crossing the diode, um, here uh, the contacts are not touching. It's just because I use a standard seal screen or standard footprint for these capacitors and that's why you see the seal screen which are crossing. Generally it's not good for the design but it was easy enough and once you know that you have to bend it it's good enough. So here I bend all of them. 
let's cut the leads off, let's cut it afterwards. The leads are very small on these ones. Shouldn't be too much of a stress. And since the components are far apart, they don't block us in a soldering. And that's it. As you can see, it's pretty easy. It's done. Um, there is a last thing which you should do if here we have the battery connection. And we want the battery connection. Let me find a phone. We want the battery connection to, to mate on here. So what I did just to have better contact and to be sure the contact is there, I put a blob of solder on the two ends. So the plus and the minus. This makes it a bit higher in elevation. So here we have a blob of solder. Oh, this one is not high enough. Let's have it even higher. And what I did is on my phone, I also added some blobs on the two contacts, plus and minus. So now, whenever we put the board in, the capacitor will just fit fine. And we will show that it is connected because of the blood of capacitors. That's it, that's actually done. The last thing you can do is remove all the flux using isopropanol or any kind of solvent, it depends on the ones you have. With this. Just use an isopropanol to clean the board and have it look nice and clean. So my, this rosin flux shouldn't, is not very aggressive and shouldn't um, be any problems, but I just remove it for the cosmetics and because it's cleaner. And it's done. Now we have a board. Uh, we need to make the cables. That's the second step. And then we will test the board. For the external connections, we need actually two things or three things. First, we have the USB to UART converter, which comes with a five cable connector. So this is quite good because we need exactly five here. And then we need two other connectors. We need the charger connector, this charger connector, and we need the 2.5 millimeter stereo jack connector, this one, which we'll plug it here. So actually from for the charger connector, you could use the charger which comes with it, it has the right charging connector. But I also Included where's the bomb? In the middle of, in the middle of material you will also find a link to to this charger connector. Actually it's three millimeter outer diameter and 1.1 millimeter inner diameter barrel jack connector. And if you want to build your own one and don't destroy the charger. For the 2.5 millimeter connector uh, you can use well, the cables are available a bit everywhere, but again, on the bill of material, I included a link to this 2.5 millimeter jack connector, so you can build your own cable. To build your own cable, I actually like to use USB cables because you have them everywhere. So I just cut pieces of it. I cut it two pieces, and uh, for for each connector, and I like to use USB connector because you have four pins and a shield so that's enough for most of the projects and you have USB cables anywhere they're pretty cheap and they come with every toy you buy 
Uh, with that you need also, because we want to connect to these pins here, to this, to this header, you also need some connectors, the female connectors for the headers, which you can crimp. Uh, I won't show you how I crimp it on these devices, it's just too boring. And then if you wanted to have it nicer, you either put heat shrink on the, on the connectors or you use this housing which you will put on the end of the cable in the end. So I'll just do the, the two cables and show you the result. So now we have one phone, one soldered board, USB to UART converter to keep belonging to it and two cables. They're ready as you see. I also cut it this kind of uh, rubberish so this part the cable bender protector so I can bend the cable more and then keep the keep the lead short keep the cable short also what I did is at the 2.5 mm stereo jack I've uh, cut the beginning so actually it would fit inside else the plastic protection would be in the way now we can connect everything um, we will connect everything to this pen header but since the text is covered by the header themselves, my mistake, we can still use this cell screen from the layout export, which is available in the releases. Uh, let's start with the um, UART, so the 2.5mm serial jack. They are also called TRS connectors because of the tip, the ring and the sleeve. So the tip should be connected to the TX pin, that's the third one. The ring, which is in the middle, should be connected to the RX pin, which is in the middle. And the ground should be connected, the sleeve, which is the sleeve here, this part, should be connected to the ground here. So that's pretty simple, let's do it. Tac, tac. Ground, I used black. For the sleeve, the ring I used green. That's TX, and for the uh, RX, and for the tip TX I used red. Let's put them all in. So the first connection is done. Oh, the cable is a bit short. Next connection is the power cable. So this. Jack barrel, three millimeters at the, the, on the outer layer and one dot one millimeter in the inside, so it fits. I can you can use the charger if you want. Uh, we first the first pin and the inside is minus, and the pin on the outside is plus. I used red and green, a uh, red and black, minus and plus. So very frequently on this barrel, the minus is the outer shell and the plus is the inner pin. Um, that's done. And now we can connect the five other ones. You don't have to look at the sheet. And we just follow the markings, which are also here. So we need the ground DTR RX TX 5 volts. I will just use these connections this way with this cable on the other end. It actually doesn't matter. So here ground will be brown, DTR will be red, RX will be green, TX no RX will be orange actually. Orange TX will be yellow. 5 volt will be green, so we can insert it this way. So we can insert it this way and we have the ribbons. And on the other side we do the exact same thing. Brown is ground. Ground is here. Then red is DTR, which is here. Um, orange is RX, which is here. 
yellow is TX, which is here, and green is 5 volts, which is here. So now we are ready to go. We have all the connections. We can fit it in. Can fit audio. And we can fit the fiber connection. As you can see, perfect. It's holding. Now we soldered it. Uh, the next step is to step it, uh, to test it, and I'll, I'll describe all the steps to to test the different functions to be sure that everything runs well. Let's see that. So now we have our phone with the motor serial board, and we want to see if our construction works. If everything has been done the right way. We just have to connect the USB to serial converter, start OsmoCon, and then you can see here it starts flashing, and the phone should be flashed with your own baseband implementation. So here we see that the board works really well. What if it doesn't? Then we will try to debug it. So the Osmo serial, the Moto serial um, board does three things. It provides a serial connection to the phone to be able to flash the baseband. It provides a power connection to the charger to be able to trigger the flashing. So it triggers the power on of the phone, it triggers so the bootloader starts and the flashing can, can happen. And lastly, it provides power to the to the phone using the battery connector. So these are the diff three different aspects and we'll test them separately. <coughs> First we'll test the serial connection, so just put the USB to serial adapter in the computer, connect the stereo 2.5mm jack in the phone, start OsmoCon, put the regular battery in, not the board, and start the phone, at least the bootloader. Briefly tap on the power on button and we can see that it flashes, so we know that our USB the serial adapter works, we know that the serial connection works. If this doesn't work, it could mean different things. Try to switch the TX and RX pin on the USB to serial converter because TX stands for transmission and RX stands for reception, but it doesn't tell you who is transmitting and who is receiving. Is it the computer or is it the phone itself? So just try to swap both of them and flash and test the USB to serial connection, test the serial connection again. This still doesn't work. Plug the 2.5mm stereo jack directly to the USB to serial converter and test if this works. Uh, if this doesn't work, use the continuity tester to find out if the cable is working and if the cable is working, then either the USB to serial converter is wrong or you have something wrong with the uh, with your software, with your computer, or I don't know. The next thing we want to test is the charger. So we just switch off OsmoCon. If we plug the charger, the phone shouldn't charge because if the if OsmoCon is switched off, the serial port is closed, and if the serial port is closed, there is no power going to the charger. OsmoCon is on, the serial port is open, and the charger, the power to the charger is enabled. So you should see the phone charging. Now we know that the charger works. If OsmoCon is off, then we'll see there's no charging anymore. If this doesn't work, uh, try to find out if it provides 5 volt. Try to connect your charging cable directly to the USB to serial adapter like we did here on the 5 volt pins, ground and 5 volts. And if the cable works but not the board works, it could mean two things. The transistor could have something wrong, but since we tested the USB to serial the US the serial port, that shouldn't really be the problem because the transistors only cut or allow the ground to be connected to the real ground. The ground from this pin and this pin to be connected to the real ground from this USB to serial converter. 
um, try to probe if 5 volt is coming to the board. Try to probe if 5 volts are coming to the pin using the multimeter whenever the serial port is open. <coughs> and the last aspect is the battery aspect. So this is the easiest one. Just put the board in. Switch Osmocon on. Now there should be power and if you press for a long time on the power on button, the phone should power on. Here we can see it powers on. This is because we didn't, the phone still has the original OS on it, the original baseband implementation. What Osmocom does per default is to load our own baseband implementation in RAM and not in ROM. So the original one stays in, in the flash ROM. And here we have seen that uh, the battery works and it only works whenever Osmocon is on. If it's off, it should work. And there we tested the three different aspects. If the battery didn't work, try to probe here if 5 volt is coming whenever you have um, the, char the USB to serial converter connected and Osmocon on. So let's try everything together. Connect the USB. The Serial, connect the charger and have Osmocom started. And as you can see, it flashes. So we have a working board and the work is done. The Osmoto serial board, which I just presented, wasn't my very first design. I actually had to go through a couple of iterations to come to these results, and every time I learned a bit of it. This is what I will explain now. This was my very first prototype. It looks a bit crude, but it, it worked quite nice, particularly uh, because I had only three days to come up with something. So here we have the 5 volt inputs, which are split it between here and here. This is where you connect the charger port of the phone, and this is where you connect the battery port of the phone. This is the common ground. Um, so here we have the plus pin, here you have the negative pin, here you have the plus pin. You can also see the diodes to prevent current for growing to the charger back to the battery and then back to the power supply as protection. Um, here we have two PMOS, which are used to control these two power sources, to switch them on and off. And here you have two uh, buttons, so you can manually switch on and off the thing. But you also had this USB to UART converter. Um, I didn't use the serial port on it, but I use it because it has two GPIO pins which I could use to switch on and off um, the PMOS and then switch on and off the power source. The disadvantage on this design was simply that uh, all the phones were connected to the same power source and I only have two transistors, so I could only switch on all the power, uh, the phones and switch off all the phones again. Um, I also have two transistors because the very first time I tried this, I had the same procedure where you first disconnect and reconnect the battery. So you switch off and on this PMOS and then you disconnect and reconnect the charger. So it starts the phone into the bootloader. And by playing a bit with it, I recognized that you don't need to have this time difference. If you switch on and off the battery and the charger at the same time, it will automatically switch on the phone and start the bootloader. So this is the first lesson I learned from this design. And this is where I use it. So here you can see this board, this very simple board. Here we have an ATX power supply, which I use to provide 5 volts, and I use this and that takes power supply simply because there was one lying around and it delivers a lot of power if I need to. Because here I have 12 phones which I used to monitor. Uh, you can see all the connection from the phone to this USB to UART converter. And I have 12 of them. 10 here and 2 here which control the phone. And here again you can see the connections to the battery. I soldered the cable directly to the battery and here the connection to the charger. Uh, there I used the normal, the normal connector. 
And that worked quite well, actually. So really, the main disadvantage was that I switched on and off all the phone at once and not just single one when they got stuck. So that was a bit of a pain because having all the phones flash the right way uh, at every time almost never worked. This is why I designed a second board based on an FTDI FT4232. And this chip is a USB to four UART converters. And um, what it allowed me to do is connect four UARTs, uh, four phones on this uh, four serial ports just with one USB chip. That was quite useful. So these are the four serial connections you can see, and these are the four power sources. And what I wanted to do is use the RTS signal of each of the serial sources to switch on and off uh, the power going to the phone. As you can see here, I only have one power source, which is used at the same time for the charger and the battery. The problem is that it didn't work quite well because this FTDI chip didn't behave as uh, I, I, I wanted it. So every time, so the first time you open the serial port, the RTS signal goes low to say that uh, something um, that the serial port has been opened. So the phone is powered on. The problem is that if you close the connection, the RTS line doesn't go up again. So it doesn't switch off the phone. So the phone were all the time on and I couldn't switch them on and off to reflash them. That was one of the drawbacks. The other drawback is that this chip costs a lot of money and it requires also a lot of components to um, for it to work. There's an alternative from Silats called CP2108, which is a bit cheaper and which behaves the right way uh, corresponding to this RTS signal. But I also didn't design a, a second board using it simply because of this overhead. The other part I did using this board was to design the small board to put on the back of the phone. So here you have the five volt input coming from here and then because you switch on and off at the same time the battery at the source you only had one input this was going to the charger again so you had to connect the cable to the charger and as you can see here on the back of the board you have the battery connection you also have several capacitors to uh, compensate for the battery because Whenever you switch on and off the phone, it uh, draws a little bit of power. And whenever it starts to transmit, it can transmit up to 2 watt in bursts. So to cope with that, and because the power supply wouldn't handle uh, this power surges very good, I put a bit of capacitors. Here again, you have the diode to prevent, to prevent for the reverse uh, power. So the, the power which went through the charger couldn't go back from the phone to the five volts. And it worked quite well. Um, I still wanted to have four USB to UART converters and I wanted to have a computer um, controlling it. And this is where I found the BeagleBone Black. It's a, it's a very neat board. This is a system on a chip, so it has everything you need. And it's very similar to the Raspberry Pi. It's a bit more powerful. It has more GPIOs and it's also uh, open hardware. So these are the advantages. And this is, I could connect, I could control this computer over this Ethernet port and an SSH connection. The five volts come in here, but the rest is almost the same. The other advantage this board has is it already comes with four UARTs, which I could use to, to do my things. It comes with a bit of more UARTs, but four are really usable for my purpose. So this is what you see here. See, here we have the four UARTs coming from the board. We didn't need any USB to UART converter. And here again, you have um, the four power connectors to switch on and off the phones. What you see here is just the controlling of the power. And what I do have is one time, um, the PMOS to control for the power on and off. And this is the NMOS so I can switch the PMOS on and off because the, of the voltage gap. And this worked quite nice. Here you see the setup. 
we have four phones. Um, then, then we have all the cables. So we have, as you can see, you can ha you have here only one power source, and then it goes here in. Here it goes out to go back in the in the phone, and also on the back of the phone you have the um, battery port. And you also have these cables here, the three cables. These are just the serial. You can see which can which go into the phone. Um, I still. So this septal worked quite nice, but the main problem is here, this Beagle Bone Black. While I recommend everyone to get one, because they're not too expensive, they're very powerful and they're quite neat, uh, probably not everyone wants to buy a $50 computer just to control four very cheap phones. So I came up with uh, almost a life design, which you see here. So here we have the USB to UART converter. Um, which are very cheap nowadays. Uh, you have all the cables going in and what goes here is 5 volts, the UART, but I also use the RTS pin to control this NMOS which you see here, uh, to control the transistors which you see here. So just using the signal on the board itself I could switch on and off the phone and then I didn't need any external board again because in any case, I need a board which goes in the phone to control the battery. Why not use this board to also control the rest, the remaining of the things? So here you have the input for the USB to serial. Here you have to output to the charger. Uh, the battery connection is on the back, which you don't see here. And here you have the serial cable, this one, which goes back into the phone. We also have four capacitors. Again, this is to compensate. Uh, this is because we don't have any battery anymore. And we need some kind of local power storage in case the phone wants to transmit or do some high power things. And the USB doesn't handle the, this power surges at once. It even has a fuse where, which switches at 700 milliampere, I think. So if you draw too much, then the power will go low. This is why we have the capacitors. Um, and this is the final board. Here we see again, uh, I actually have two NMOS now. This NMOS is used to um, invert the RTS signal. So whenever I want to, whenever I switch, I open the serial connection, the RTS goes low, but I want that uh, it gets high for this NMOS to activate and put power in. This is why I have two NMOS. This is just an inverter and this is really the power NMOS which I use. Here we have the diode again to protect from the reverse current. Here we have the three capacitors. These are just limiting resistors first for the serial so power doesn't flow back through the serial or any way around in the serial or very less power. This is the charger port and this is the USB to serial. Uh, port. That was a prototype and I made it a bit more professionally. Um, so the prototype which I used here, here you see an example where I just had to buy this USB 2 UART for every for each of the phones and it works really quite well. So here you have simply the USB 2 UART going to the back of the phone, then you have the charger connection, the serial connection, the battery connection and whenever you open the serial port it switches on the phone, so you can directly flash on it, and when you close it, it switches off the phone, and you can re reflash it. And after I did a prototype, I just, uh, in my lab, I ordered prototypes, PCB prototypes. And this is the final result. Uh, the current revision I have, which is revision F. I will change some things. Uh, the first thing is that I will remove this pin connection. This is a bit of a hassle. So here we will have really a 2.5 millimeter TRS connection to connect also this phone jack. Here we have the, here we will have a barrel jack connector to connect to the charger, uh, a proper one and not this flimsy pin things which you have to prepare and consume a bit of a time. Uh, these three capacitors are electrolytic capacitors. They have a high ESR and also they don't switch on and off as good as tantalum capacitors or ceramic capacitors. So what I will add here is just tantalum and ceramic capacitors to cope with the bursts and to have a clean signal on the radio transmission whenever it transmits something. Also, 
These components are through hole components and it was my purpose in the beginning that I use only through hole components so everyone can easily solder it and also this is why I have a single side board so everyone can produce it in their home lab but what I will do is I will use surface mount devices. They are a lot cheaper, they consume less space and also I will use uh, two layers PCBs because they are as expensive and they just simplify the routing. Um, the last aspect I, I will change is that then there will be no cable to the USB to your converter anymore, but I will stick it somewhere here. I won't have my chip directly or USB to serial chip directly connect the uh, put on this board simply because then there is a bit of overhead. You still have to design the USB to UART's not the converter itself, but I mean, you have to put some capacitors and additional logic or protections. And also because it would be a bit more expensive. So this USB to UI converter, you get them between one and five and three dollars. They're really, really inexpensive. They come with LEDs. They come with the right capacitors and the logic and all the parts you need around this USB to UI converter. And also they come with a USB connector, which also costs money. So what I will have is just use this cheap USB to UART converter and solder them directly on the board instead of having the chip put myself in and soldered by hand by myself. <coughs> and um, that will be the next revision. But for now, if you want, you can use this revision F, which works really quite nice. Produce your own boards and enjoy remote flashing of these phones. And so I used this prototype for six months now and it worked really nice and I'm still monitoring the mobile phone networks. Enjoy!